Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Vince with Rudy Long Co. Part two of a part three series here at Sporting Valley uh, Sod Farm. So let's get right into it. Let's uh, see what Matt has to say. Uh, a lot of great information on this episode. So make sure you're subscribed. That way you get all the latest updates. And here we go. And then for the, the homeowner that is deciding, hey, do I want to seed? Do I want to uh, buy sod? Yep. Um, there's a cost. Um, difference between those but yeah um why would you recommend a homeowner just say hey i'm just going to use some sod instead of dealing with uh, seeding my lawn and doing an overseed or, or a new renovation yeah well if you ask the people that work with me i'm pretty impatient so if you're impatient you want sod yeah uh, because again we're taking this from seed from bare soil but it, it's a it's a steps to get it to look like this yeah and if you if you're not willing to take those steps you, you're probably it's going to take you a while to get to this yeah or you may never get there or like we talked about a little bit ago you might not have the the varieties a good variety that it will ever get you there you, you may right. never be able to achieve that lawn that you really have in your mind we, we always we have we talk in the office you know wives and dogs sell a lot of sod <laughs> when when people move into these into new homes and uh dog starts tracking mud in on the new carpet the kids start tracking mud in or it's, it was seeded and then after after a week they've already got it tore up the dogs got tore up kids playing football tore it up the husband shows up at our office or he's on the phone and, and he wants sod because he's getting pressure from home to get him out of the mud so if you don't like mud and you're you're about aesthetics and you really want a, a good lawn in the long term sod's a long-term investment right it's not something immediate and then it goes down the hill with, with proper care, we're giving you the, the right grass to have a good lawn forever. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of that, I've done a renovation this year again. Uh, as many of you have done renovations this year, we had washout after washout. So uh, if I would have known how the season would have been, I probably would have put some sod down. Uh, this is 365 SS. This is what I planted in my front lawn. And my front does not look as good as this turf right here. So uh, yeah. Take it for what you want, guys. You guys, great fungicides on all your fields. Yeah, that, that is one thing in, in my career. When, when I started here, we really didn't do much with fungicides. So I don't know if it's, I think the pressure's increased. I think the, the weather's been changing. Uh, so we're, we've been on a pretty regular fungicide program on yeah. our grass. And we've seen the improvement in the summer. Uh, just little things like on bluegrass, you get a little leaf spot. Yeah. Um, where we're not getting that uh, but then you don't get the big wipeout diseases like you know you bluegrass it's summer patch on the tall uh, brown patch typically won't kill but it makes it look bad yeah uh, pythium on tall I mean that's a wipeout disease mm -hmm. uh, had that a couple of times yeah so we, we try and protect ourselves from that yeah uh, and work with some of the genetics uh, uh generics i mean yeah uh the off brand uh they're a little bit more affordable than some of the brand names like a clearies or a ban all yeah self do like for pythium we'll keep things on a phosphite uh preventative just because of for us a ban all subdue those type of chemicals that, that that's unaffordable chemistry for us yeah so we try and uh be preventative about things yeah. Rather than, you know, we, we always get something that you got to go after, uh, you know, uh, curatively. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, diseases this year was tough. The, the last week, it was last week, August, I think it was, we, it was like, it was very humid. Uh, we were probably, we were between 14 and 21 days out on a fungicide. You, you know, you might be able to get three weeks. So we were stretching toward the end of that three weeks and, and we got, we had pythium on some of our tall and low lying areas where it was a little wetter, more humid. Yeah. Uh, so we, yeah, the, there was probably seven, 10 days is all the coverage you were getting at some points this summer. Yeah. That's good old fungus. Fungus <laughs> among us, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can laugh about it now when it's, uh, when it's 60 degrees in the morning, but it went <laughs> 75 at, uh, 7:30, you're humid you're and you look out there and you see all the little mycelium everywhere. And oh like, yeah, Shh. yeah. You know you're spending money. Yeah, the, the, the 
my guys that do the spraying get a little nervous when they see me call on a on a Saturday or a Sunday morning. Uh, they they, they kind of know what I'm calling about. What is your fertilization look like? So you guys just you have a plot over here that you just uh, yep. seeded. Um, will you fertilize right away with your granular? Um, or will you wait a couple days until you start seeing germination and then fertilize? What's your schedule like with that? On a new planting, we'll put down a, a fertilizer at plant that we work into the soil. Uh, we feel like that, that gives a benefit. There's something there for the, for the seedling, for the plant when it germinates. Uh, the next fertilizer we'll get, once we get the grass germinated, we get it up enough that we can traffic it. There, there's a line there on, on a young seedling with, with bigger equipment. Uh, when you can get on it. Uh, the soil needs to be dry enough and the grass needs to be at a point where it can take some traffic and turning. So once we get it up enough, we'll, we'll hit it with some nitrogen to try and push it along and push it up to you know some top growth, really. Uh, our goal with the fall seeding is to get it up, uh, get the field covered and try and get it mowed a few times before heading into the winter. Uh, a, a young seedling in our soil, in our area, uh, we'll, we'll get a frost heave in the winter so if you have too young a plant in the winter uh, it'll it can actually pop up out of the ground or it'll perch up out where in the in the spring you go out and you'll see it just the roots up out of the ground and, and there you're, you're right on the edge you got to get smacked back down before it, it desiccates blowing across the field so it, it's kind of a race right now it's a race to cold weather Yep. these seeds is really something we plant this fall we want to hopefully be cutting next year okay so what is your process uh, how long will you let a uh, what's your turnaround for for when you cut sod so you plant a field yep. how long will you wait before you cut that field and then how soon after uh, will you reseed that field uh, it it depends on the timing right this 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 type of agriculture is a little different than, than, a, than a row crop farmer where we need them we need a a customer on the other end to, to take our product up so we're, we're cutting every day fresh uh, once we get a field empty we'll plant in the spring so from when we can start working ground depending on how early the spring hits in March until the end of April that's kind of our cutoff in the spring to, to plant uh, and then the fall we start middle end of August and then we'll run that up till beginning October. We, we don't like to be planting much past October 1st for what we talked about a little bit ago. And I don't like to plant much past May 1st because it, it you're, you're so dependent on the weather for the summer, what the, what the summer is going to give you. Once you plant something in the spring, you're sticking with that through the summer. That's, that's, your, that's your best buddy. You got to hang with it, make sure it gets water to make it through as a young plant because it'll typically stress down because it's quicker because it doesn't have deeper roots. Uh, I don't like personally planting in the spring, but w we need to for like what you talk about demand mm -hmm. and then it, but it also helps us spread our risk a little bit where if we get like this fall is really wet and it's tough to plant that we're not sitting on a lot of acres we got to get in the ground and then we can't mm -hmm. so it, 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 it helps us to, to spread that risk out a little bit and, and then keep our inventory moving like our spring seeds from this year we'll be harvesting that next spring so we're on about a year turn on, on most crop most okay. fields uh, which is tight yeah. you don't have a lot of room for in our soil uh, in our area you don't have a lot of room for error you know if you don't get a good catch uh, you have something knock the roots back you, you just got to be doing the right things to make sure that you have a you have a saleable product something you can put on a pallet be proud of yeah customer can deal with they're happy with uh, it, it's it's all about doing the right things at the right time, and that's not always possible when you're dealing with the weather. Yep, the unpredictable weather. Yeah. And then the human error factor, because we screw stuff up all the time. Do you? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've burnt down more grass than, than most people have in their lives. You know, most, uh, you know, a lawn care guy or, or a homeowner might burn their lawn down. Well, I burnt this whole 20 acre field almost down to the ground because I did something stupid. Yeah. Wow. So it's a costly error. Yeah, 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 but, but you, learn, you have to learn from <laughs> yep, it, right? Exactly. Uh, you learn not to do that again. <laughs> it's costly, but uh, that's how we learn. Yeah. All right, so that's it, everybody. Thanks for watching. This is a three-part series, so make sure you're subscribed. 
Uh, leave a comment below if you have any questions. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.